You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is, politics is our game. Don't click anything. Don't go away, because you're going to get 29 minutes of the hottest show you've seen in this year about the mayor's race. You know, we're taping this on, uh, when are we taping this? Taping this on March 21. So we're, I don't know, 12 days or so away from the election on April 2nd, and it's a runoff. You may see this the day before the election. We're not sure. But um, so you know about Lori Lightfoot. You know about Tony Preckwinkle. I mean, and I guess the question is for you, Charles Thomas, our distinguished journalist emeritus, okay? He is, he's just a reporter. He, he likes to say he's just a journalist. He is a journalist, okay? And he's been doing this stuff for like 45 years, right? Yeah, between 45 and 50 years, but also had the, uh, a, a new experience during this nonpartisan mayoral election. I supported one of the candidates in the first round, Amara Inya. I uh, acted as a senior advisor to her campaign. And how'd she do? I thought she did well. It was her first time on the ballot citywide. She garnered about 50,000 votes, only 8,000 fewer than Susanna Mendoza, who mm -hmm. spent a lot more money right. than Amara Inya. What, 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 how'd she finish in the 14 candidate Number field? six. Number and six. And she finished ahead of Gary Chico. She finished ahead of uh, Paul Vallis. Um, and I thought those are two okay. fairly well-known no names in the city. Did she do what she wanted to do, and did you do what you wanted she to wanted do? She wanted to become mayor of the city of She Chicago. thought she was going to win. Um, I wanted her to raise her profile because she's a fascinating, very intelligent, um, very thoughtful young woman. I wanted her to raise her profile, and she was able to do that. We'll come back to her. Who's going to win this race? Preckwinkle, Tony Preckwinkle, Cook County Board President, Lori Lightfoot, ex-partner at Mayor Brown ex-president of the Chicago Police Board, uh, held a variety of positions in the uh, Mayor Daley administration, appointed, and uh, she's never held office before, never run for office before. She, she probably is the favorite right now. The um, polls show have, her some winning by 20, 28 Some of points. those polls are, and I have to respect yeah. the polls. However, I don't necessarily believe them. Okay. Um, I think that uh, we still have, I think at this point that of this taping, 12 about days. 12 days. Yeah. And things can change. And w we have to remember something about what happened on um, February 26th. And that is that there are there were 1.5 million plus registered voters in the city of Chicago. Lori Lightfoot, the turnout was only 34%. Lori Lightfoot received 17% of that 34% turnout. In other words, only about 8% of the people in the city voted, registered voters in the like city. She 80, 85,000 or something. Yeah, yeah. Voter, I think it's 90, 90 90,000, 98. But I think okay. that, but keep in mind that only 8% of the registered voters in this city chose Lori Lightfoot well, when in the they first say round. The, when they say turnout of 34%, what do they mean? They mean that only 34% of the 1.5 million okay. plus voters oh, total turned vote. out to vote. 34% turnout, but, uh, but of the total registered voters, she only got, you're saying, 8% 8 of 8 the vote. vote. And Tony Preckwinkle only got, only got about 6 to 7%. So about 15% of the voters decided on these two candidates to be mayor. That is not a mandate. Okay, but then And a lot election, of people did not know or, or did not want to vote for Lori Lightfoot in the first round, so to call her a favorite how, now... How many voters will there be in this election? I have no idea. It's probably 600,000, similar number, maybe a little larger. Say there's six. Say she wins 60% uh, and there's 600,000 voters, then that, then that means she's up to like 360,000. That votes. would be a much better showing than what happened during the first okay. round. So, now, I understand yeah. that there were 14 candidates, yes. and that divided the vote, yes. certainly. And so, uh, uh, but we got to keep in mind that there is no outpouring of s support for either Let's show your of bias. these candidates. Let's show your bias. You already voted, right? You I voted. voted this morning. And who did you vote for? 
Um, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for. That is Come one on, of the most the rude questions you could ever ask an American citizen. You just Come told me now. before the show. See? Huh? We're doing a play. You told me before the show. I told you, you before the show, but I don't think it's anybody's business. Well, that was you didn't say. You didn't say, you didn't say off the record. What? I could disclose it right now. You didn't say off the record. Go for it. Disclose it. Yeah. So everybody want to know how Charles voted? He just passed that ballot over. He just didn't. You voted for treasurer, but you did not vote for mayor. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Now why? Because you see any I difference between I Nicole haven't and, heard uh, a vision for this city from either candidate. Not that I heard a vision for this city from any of them uh, during the first round, yeah. but in these two candidates have not given me a vision for the city. They haven't. No vision. I haven't heard a vision. I'm hearing people. I think that a lot of people are going to vote. The, who vote for Lori Lightfoot, who, who mark her on the ballot, are going to vote for Lori Lightfoot as an expression against Tony Preckwinkle because Preckwinkle is so tied up with the Democratic Party and with Ed Burke and all that business that there's going to be a protest vote. They're going to vote for Lori Lightfoot because they know or they believe that Tony Preckwinkle is more associated with the Democratic Party machine. So she, Lori Lightfoot, you're saying, her vision is to implement an administration, this is my guess of what I think Lori's vision is, her vision is to implement a, an administration, execute policies that are against the status quo. Uh, now, that's, that's, that's a negative thing, but then you have to go from there, is there a positive? But if you said, what is it in, two, in one or two words? I heard her last night on the ABC7 debate. You see that. You know, that great station, which was the biggest news okay, operation in the middle of it, okay. between the coast, ABC7. So what folks, did she say? She said, look, I am for change, but it's not change versus experience. No, no, no. That's what some of us journalists thought. You know, Preckwinkle is experienced, Lightfoot's change. No, no, no. She says, it is change to uproot the status quo. No more Ed Burke, no more Joe Berrios, no more, you know, real estate property taxes that abuse African Americans. Oh no, she is about change. But listen. Hey, that's a hell of a but vision. Listen, Jeff, that's a hell of a Lori Lightfoot, I'm not for anybody. I'm just repeating what she said. Lori Lightfoot worked for the Daily Administration. Yeah. As uh, she worked as the director of the Office of Professional Standards, which was supposed to be protecting while, people from abusive yeah. and corrupt police sure, officers. Yeah, yeah. And they were abusing black people in the 1990s. She didn't work for, them, so she didn't work for them in the 1990s. She worked for them in no, 2002. No, no. She, she worked for them during the... No. Whenever she worked for them. 2002. She worked, that, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's irrelevant. Yeah. She worked for them. It, she worked for for the Daily Administration. They were abusing black people back then too. She had jobs okay? that lasted about a year. She was a, a procurement so. director at City Hall. Yeah, like a year. She, she was a she was not a hack. Listen, listen. Listen. She was not a hack. She was a procurement director at City Hall for another year. When blacks were being denied contracts, she's doing in what this she city. could. She's okay, doing what she could. Okay, fine. But we were being denied Change contracts. Change comes slowly. We okay. heard that from Preckwinkle. She was also the head of the police board. She is connected to the establishment. She is a partner at Mayor Brown, which is a big corporate law firm. Let's face it, Jeff, if Lori Lightfoot, if there was a person with the exact same resume as Lori Lightfoot, and that person was a white heterosexual male, that person wouldn't have a shot? Well, of course. We come look on, at the man. core of the person. Charles, come on, come on. we look Listen, at the core. What, 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 is know, the, what is the core of Lori Lightfoot? Forget what you well, said. Well, I think she what represents is the core a of different Lori person. She's a Who is different... she? Tell us about her. She, I, I can't. I mean, I'm not, I'm not okay. a big Lori Lightfoot supporter. Is she a woman? Supporter. Is she a woman? Yes. Is she African-American? Yes. Is she a lesbian? Yes. Is she married to another woman? Does, does that lesbian, sound, no. okay, does that yes. sound like okay. an establishment Fine. person no. to you? No, and I think that is the difference. Yes. It's not a difference in terms of what you've done. Now, Tony Preckwinkle, on the other hand, has also made herself into an establishment kind of candidate by accepting money from Ed Burke. Right. Oh, my gosh. By giving Burke's son a job, oh, by yeah. being a, oh, a, yeah. a, a politician who basically... Uh, you know, when, in, in Cook County, when you're an opponent, not only do they beat you in the polls, they burn the body kind of thing. Right. You know, she's been a kind of a ruthless 
uh, character politically. Oh, she is the Cook County she Democratic is a, Party chairman. an establishment candidate. Yeah. You can't without get more. a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think what happened yeah. is that Lori Lightfoot got a pass in the first round because nobody went after her the way they could have gone after her in the first round because nobody believed she was a factor. She was being regarded as a Charles, second you know, or third tier the, candidate. The harder, and at the end of it, she, she had a surge. Charles, you were a hard worker when you were a journalist, right? You busted your butt all the time. Absolutely. You were always afraid there, you wouldn't meet deadline and you always did, right? Got it. Because you knew the harder you worked, the luckier you got. When somebody said, oh, Charles, you were just lucky, Look, you were lucky to have a good career. So what's your point? Because when you bust your butt, whether you're Charles Thomas, whether you're Lori Lightfoot, you're going to be lucky. She was busting her butt, Absolutely. and they ignored Look, her, dude. and you called that luck? She you, took you, advantage of it. You make your fist it. like this, and you give me a fist bump. Okay. She filled up her silo of voters better than anybody else in the first round. She took a coalition uh, L LGBTQ right. people. She took lakefront liberals, as they call them. And she filled up her silo better than any of the other candidates. And she got cops she in there now. She deserves. She's got cops well, in there. Well, now she she's does got, because okay. well, now that was she an unusual does. coalition now. Well, now she does because well, she's in because the runoff. Why? Okay. Because she's in the runoff. So That's you, why. So you can take cops and mix them up with Gold Coast limousine liberals? Is okay, that what I she's think, doing? Look, That's what and, she's and doing. And people, I think are going to her because they realize that she is a very effective campaigner and that she is a favorite to win right now. They like winners. That they people like winners. Like winners. Yeah. Absolutely. And why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean this is gonna this conceivably the best chance to be the mayor. So you she want has to a, be on the mayor's side. She has a shot of coming in with a big mandate and she has a shot at doing change. She absolutely she has, has a shot. shot. Make the argument for her. Pretend you were working for her. Make the and then I'll turn it around to she say has, Andrew Fitzoni. What's the argument for Lori Lightfoot? If you're trying, we're say we're airing a day or two before. I think she will. I think she will bring different voices uh, to the to City Hall. I really do, um, and I think she will lean on her own experience in life to bring new ways of looking at the city. I don't think she was Rahm's candidate, that's for sure. Um, and I think she will do things differently. She has a tremendous opportunity. And because she didn't take money from a lot of the establishment political sources during the first round, she has an opportunity to be, I believe, a mayor like Harold Washington, who didn't get the kind of establishment support when he ran in 1983 right. during the first he round. He built an unusual group of coalitions. Absolutely. Right? She has that opportunity to do that. Okay. Make the argument for Tony Preckwinkle. Give it your best shot. She has more experience in running government in Chicago and in Chicago and Cook County than Lori Lightfoot has, certainly. Does that work to her advantage given the current circumstances of our government? Um, I don't know if that's a, that's a two-edged sword. Uh, I think she has more connection to the administrative class in the city, those who know government, she is going to be able to put together an administration more better okay. than Lori will. Okay, you made the case for both. It, Patty Baller said in 1939, 80 years ago, Chicago ain't ready for reform. Charles Thomas, experienced journalist, journalist emeritus, the man who knows more about this oh, than really on. anybody I know. Okay. Yeah. So, Charles, is Chicago ready for reform on April 2nd, 2019? Depends on what Chicago you're talking about. If you're talking about official Chicago, the no. corporate community, are they corporate ready for community, reform? Corporate community, no. They aren't ready. Are the people ready? No. Absolutely. And are the I blacks think, on the south and west side ready for reform? Yes, and I think that's why Lori Lightfoot's going to do a lot better are, than anybody expects. So are the whites on in Gold Coast and River North and in Streeterville and Lincoln Park 
out in Saganosh, in Beverly. Well, not all, are all of those folks ready for Not food? all those neighborhoods, but I think a lot of them. You know, yeah. there are a lot of new people in Chicago right yeah. now. A lot of new right. people. I mean, uh, um, a lot of people are move. A lot of people are moving out. But there's a significant number of people moving in. Not as many as moving out. Are they ready for reform, yes. those new people? They're ready for reform. And what does that mean? Okay, now violence. There were major issues. They haven't really discussed this in detail, a little bit. There are four, four or five major issues. There's reducing violence. There's improving the quality of education and ridding CPS of rapes and sexual assaults and that stuff. And there's fixing the city's finances. There's bringing about growth, not just in the shiny city, not just at O'Hare, not just at the Exposition Center at McCormick Place, but in Englewood and the other neighborhoods of the South Side, the neighborhoods of the West Side. Those were the issues. Let's and take one, violence. Can Lori Lightfoot do, do anything to dramatically make the city safer on the west side that's and on the south where side. I did not, that's one of the areas, and you have some others that you also mentioned. That's an area where I did not hear a vision. I didn't hear vision. I didn't hear anything new. I didn't hear. She talks gonna, about the root causes, yeah, long right. run. Who hasn't talked about that? Prove the quality of education. Over the last 30 years. You, yeah, you, you know, people don't drop out, they don't join gangs. Give me a break. That doesn't we count. all know that's true. What about the short run? You, what about the short run? How do you, what are you going to do? What's her first act? Do you, do you know what her first act is when she becomes mayor? I think that... Um, is she going to fire Eddie Johnson? I think, I don't know that firing Eddie Johnson is necessarily the She key, said she would. But she, I think she, she said will. that violence was that to stop the exodus of people from the city. Right. You have to stem the, the, this tide of violence. And she said, th that's what she said. She didn't say how. Do you know She's how? Wanted, what no, would you, I, if I, you were I, advising her, what would you tell her mm -hmm. to do? What would you tell... Lori Lightfoot, if you were an Boy, advisor, tell her, if you I, were an advisor and she said, Charles, how do I get my arms around this violence issue and how do I make the city safer for the people on the south and west side? She's asking you, Charles Thomas, what are you telling Lori? <laughs> I'm not an advisor, but I but, but I if think, you were, what I would you tell I think you have her? to begin to understand. First, let's be real. The violence in this city is a, a black, young black men shooting and killing other young black men, right. sometimes missing their target and hitting a black child right. or a black mother or someone totally not lots involved. Lots of times, lots You've of times. You've got yeah. to approach it f with a, a historic understanding. I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, black nationalism. You have to begin to enlist those speakers who understand the black community and understand black people's responsibility to other black people in the context of our historic struggle, of our historic struggle in this hemisphere. You have to be able to understand that. There are people in our community who understand that, but they are treated like pariahs. Understand what? I'm they understand it. our responsibility as black people to each other. Not to shoot your brother. Yeah. Who's, who preaches that? Who tells you that you need to, author, to understand black business? You need to patronize black businesses if you live in the black community. Who preaches that? Louis Farrakhan does, for mm -hmm. one, he, but he's held up as a pariah. Well, is he having an effect? Forget the negative no, things. No, he, he can have an effect. He can't? If the, he can. He can. If the city would enlist, would enlist and, and, re, and use speakers such as him and understand that historically there have been many black nationalist speakers who have been held by this society as pariahs. Yeah. There's Marcus Garvey. There was Elijah Muhammad. There were others okay. who taught black people to be self-sufficient and to respect each other. Those people have been denigrated by the general society and the mass media, and they are the most effective speakers. Malcolm X was another effective speaker, but he was held out as someone who wanted to destroy America Just when what he really wanted to do was to rebuild the black community. So a lot of the crime, 80% of the crime, the homicides and so forth, young black men killing other young black men, 
fighting over drug turf, right? I don't know if it's Mostly. always fighting over not drug always, turf. Not always, but a lot no, of it's absolutely that. not. But why else? Why else do these young black because men there could kill be, other black you could, men? You could step on someone's shoe, yeah, and, they, and, and, it, kill and, you. and it escalates. And because of the easy availability of handguns mm -hmm. these days, the same way we have an easy availability availability to cell phones, then people get killed. But why? That's why? Why was Ray Kelly and Bratton in New York? able to reduce homicides from 2,200 to 300, even though they have three times the population, they have half the number of I can't homicides. speak to the dynamic Why, in New York How did York they City. do that? I, I don't know. They didn't have black I, nationalists. I don't, I don't know if they did or they didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know Why enough about... Why is Chicago so special in terms of having extraordinary Because the communities are so isolated here. More than New York. More so than in more New More than York Los City. Angeles. More than Los Angeles, yes. They are more isolated Segregated, here. is that the Segregated, word? and there's people are sort of left to stew in their own mass here, and there's no, there's no effort to try to reach so if we, people. So if we, if we isolated them less, as Chicago housing, this mixed income group, was supposed to do, you would have public housing that had a mixed income, so people were less isolated. It wasn't just low-income hoodlums in there. It was a no, mixture. I, you know, Jeff, we're getting down a road here that I, I really can't help you with all of that. That's, I mean, that's, that, those, those are deep sociological things. Okay. I, I'm just saying that the, the well, just make it, black people are going to stop. Came in, excuse me. Say Lori came in and says, I, I heard Charles say it's too isolated. I will make a strong effort, short run, to make it less isolated. Say she did that. Would that be good, and might she be able to do that? Uh, that would be good, but I don't know what her plan is to do that. That okay. is the vision that I That's have not vision. heard from okay. either candidate. Let's go to education. Because oh, look, I hear from people like Gary McDougall and others who have not been a part of the establishment studying this. They say, you have the problems in these neighborhoods. You have drug-infested neighborhoods. You have local monopolies, union-dominated monopolies for public schools. You have kids in third grade reading at a first grade level and okay. then dropping out. So say you thought Gary was right, we passed over the drugs. Do what you can because to make kids, so by the time they're in third grade, they're reading at the third grade level, they're less apt to drop out. Make sure there are not rapes and sexual harassment complaints coming at the rate of one every, one every other week, a credible complaint for 10 years. In other words, make your schools livable, make them safe, and make them productive. Would that be a good goal, and could she do that? Well, Lori of course, Lightfoot. that's a great goal. Could she do that? But I think you have to have a that? vision for how to do it. What we have today are politicians who basically talk about the outcomes that they want, but they don't give us any roadmap for getting there. Give her some help. You know. Well, I mean, I, I, I think what we could just, she do? I think we schools, just gave her choice? some help. I think well, we have to restore a sense of self-respect, self-determination, self-control to the community. And I think you do that by one way you do it is with media. I mean, you have to begin to tell people what you want. Yeah. What, what the outcome should be. You have to make people understand how their actions are working counter to their own survival. Mm -hmm. I think people With like Louis Farrakhan do that in the black community. Maybe get, what he says outside the black community and how it resonates there, I get it. Maybe I find, get how people okay. understand, maybe don't find, want to do with maybe, that, maybe find deal with that. 10 or 15 junior Louis Farrakhans without the anti-Semitism. Take his nationalism. Well, you know, take his national. It shouldn't be that hard, Charles. Exactly. Take his nationalism. Take his self-respect. Get ten who are 35, 40, because Lewis is probably now 80 now. He's got this this element of anti-Semitism. Remove that, and then do it. How hard can it be to find 20, 30, 40 young men? I think you find them. They are do, there. So Jeff, why? They are why, there right why didn't now. Daly do it? Je why didn't I'll Ron tell you why it? they don't do it. Why don't because they do they'll it? take 95 million dollars to build a police academy, yeah. believing that's going to solve the problem. But that's just dumb. When they give no million dollars to those who want to rebuild the 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 black community. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna there you go. I'm gonna articulate the. Did Obama. you get it? 
Say that one more time. Did Please. you understand what I just said? Say it one more time. Ninety-five million dollars to build a okay. police academy. They'll do that, but no million dollars to to rebuild the character and self-respect in the black community. Why, be why would I they? Tell, why? Because they don't want to. Because once you give black people self-respect and dignity, when you restore that okay. with 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 a media program, then. That goes counter to what America wants to see. America or the city of Chicago, man. the Democratic Party no longer can control the votes of those people. They no longer can control the votes when people become independent thinkers and self dependent and self sufficient. They don't need Rom's handouts. They don't need Tony's handouts. Exactly. Exactly. You hit the nail on the yeah. head, man. But you've got to do so Lori the right might do thing. So Lori might do it differently. Let's because hope she... I Look, I pray she does. Because I, she didn't run for office. I want Lori okay, okay. Lightfoot to be the greatest okay. mayor, if she's elected, to be the greatest mayor this city has ever seen. Okay, and in 30 ever seconds... Ever experienced. Yeah, and you know, this problem of 80... We've got a list. They talk about the, gang bank, about the gang list, and it's inaccurate, and I heard that crap. It's crapola, folks. It's crapola. Why? Because I don't care what's inaccurate. I have been told, and you've been told, there's a list of 1,800 people who we know who they are, and they are 80% likely to be the next victim or the next perp of violence. I don't want to go arrest them. Go talk to them. Go get them to go join the good side. Most of these people, I'm told, you know, would, they would take them, a job for 30000 over out, over they, sitting on the corner. they bring out a gun to shoot anybody, whether they're mad at them or whatever, yeah. we have to make them feel ashamed of doing that, of how they are affecting our struggle, how they are holding up our struggle. They're, they're, they're worse than the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. They're worse than, and we have to make them know that. You're the guy and, to do it. You're the guy to well, do it. Seriously, I this show, I, I'm maybe. I'm going to do it. Uh, you could do it a hundred times a year. I think Lori Lightfoot okay. could, be, could help in that. And I think Jeff Berkowitz could help in that by not belittling and, and somehow believing that black nationalism is something bad. No, I never everybody. said that. Well, I said anti-Semitism is bad. Well, I, but you, I love the black nationalism. Just remove the anti-Semitism. If, if Farrakhan today were to renounce this anti-Semitism and said, Jeff, I'm about black nationalism, I'd be there. But there are a lot more I'll, people out there other I, than I, Louis Farrakhan I believe in redemption, who, who believe you know? in black nationalism. Okay. The Panthers. Okay. The Panthers. The black Panther Bobby Party Rush, the old Bobby of 40 Rush. years ago. You, they were the same thing. Was it was same black thing. nationalism. Yeah. They fit, we fed okay. ourselves mm. and we protected ourselves. And when we armed ourselves to protect ourselves, white folks got mad. Yeah, Fred oh Hampton. God. You remember Fred Hampton? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. but, the, but black nationalism is not anti-white people. Okay. It's pro-black people. I'm with you, Charles. You won me over. Okay. You won my cameraman, Alan Voss, over. Okay. You got us. So you got a minute. Uh, we covered some issues. We covered Lori's vision of change, of removing status quo. The only thing we never said we should have, anti-corruption. You got to get rid of the corruption. You got to get rid of that Burke stuff. You got to get rid of aldermanic privilege. How many times have we had this conversation okay. over the last 40 years? So in 30 seconds, sum it all up. 50 years, Charles, 100 years. Mm -hmm. Speak to the people of Chicago. Speak to the people of Chicago. Give them 30, 45 seconds of advice as they go to vote. Uh, I think they have to understand that the vote, voting for one candidate or another, is not going to solve the problems that we have in Chicago, particularly as they pertain to violence and uh, the city's economy. Um, there, it's going to take a lot more work on the ground. And I want whichever of these women is elected mayor to understand that and begin a program to lead the different factions of our city toward the resolutions. Like we, too often we talk about too much attention downtown, not enough attention okay. in the neighborhoods. We have to make downtown, find a way to get downtown to lead the movement to help the neighborhoods. It's not going to be a mayor. It's going to be the people. You come back next week and every week to public affairs to see somebody like Charles Thomas. Maybe we'll have Charles Thomas come back and then analyze the election and the way forward. Thank you so much, Charles Thomas. Thank you, my brother. Okay. And you come back next week and every week to public affairs.